Hey folks, it's Peppy, I'm back. I've just finished planting for the evening. It's Friday night. I've just finished making a video for you guys about planting seven punnets for a restaurant order in Lismore, my favourite order. Um, we're going to do seven punnets of six different varieties from start to finish, from my medium through to my packaging and a little label on the front, on the top. Anyway, I'm not going to wait on too long. Let's get into it. This is how I do, not how to, but hopefully it inspires you. It's a bit of an exciting day today. Um, tarp, truck coming and two cubic metres of soil. This is when you know things are getting real. Alright, let's see this soil turn up. Okay, as we watch the truck unload, check out the logo on the side of it. I think it's pretty cool. I've got the guys to make this up for me out of 30% compost, 20% uh, sand, 30% dark soil, and 20% um, chipped up barks and that that have been broken down into very fine um, particles. So it's very fine soil. I'm really keen to give it a go, but I've got two cubic meters. Alright, so why did I do this? I'm saving hundreds on um, this bag potting mix I've been buying. This load, $200, and seriously it's tons, and to buy that much in bags would have cost me probably 1500 So that's why I did it. I suggest you cover them with a tarp. Uh, I'm going to, for two reasons, the rain, can wash it away, etc. But also I've got chickens and they'll scratch the heck out of this. Anyway, watch me mix it up shortly. Okay, let's mix up a peppy blend. Um, this is how I do it. It's one bucket of perlite, two buckets of professional cocoa core. I like to use this stuff as it's been more pH balanced. There's less um, salt in it, which can build up over time. Not so important for microgreens, but I do like to keep my soil pH nice. And then I reuse the buckets. Let's have a look how much of this new soil I'm going to use. All right, uh, check out Peppy's farming attire, thongs on a singlet. Uh, not very safe and practical for high UV like we're experiencing at the moment, but it was hot today. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, add three buckets of this new medium. I'm going to add it to the wheelbarrow. Guys, I'm using two wheelbarrow loads a week at the moment for my business, so this is the most practical way for me to mix it up. Uh, you will find clumps, I guess, at times. Um, I break mine up with my hands and I go through it quite thoroughly after I've mixed it, but another way is to screen it. There's plenty of videos on YouTube how to build a screen and to, to do that, but this works for me. I've never had any issues. All right, guys, the footage coming up will be narrated with double time sort of speed just because there's a fair bit of it. I'm just showing you the seeds we'll be using, getting set up for the plant, and um, we'll be doing seven punnets and growing them in the lid um, upside down like this. That's the one kilo strawberry punnet. This is the one kilo cake bun punnet that I grow the red amaranth in. Got a spray bottle, it's a bowl, and... Um, this is the fine vermiculite that I use. It's the finest you can get. I find that very good. And my watering can. So let's keep moving on. All right, guys, the next step is fill up the punnet lid with your medium. Um, that's your one kilo strawberry. Here's the one kilo cake bun for the red amaranth. And what I do is fill up the lid. I don't fill up the bottom part, it makes harvest easy. Now we give it a good soak in a tray that doesn't have holes, so any water that goes through can be reabsorbed if required. And I let that sit for about three to four minutes, so it really soaks in. And um, we'll do the next step. Alrighty, next step, let's do some planting. First up is red amaranth. We're gonna do two of these. Um, I just free pour my seed, but I've worked out in the past and it's always about the same, five grams per punt. I plant quite densely and um, they seem to work out fine and look beautiful. And um, there we go. Next is, oh yeah, there's a look at how dense it sort of is. That's pretty normal for growing red amaranth, I believe. 
Um, next is cress. Uh, same again, it's a smaller seed, so I'm using about five grams. I'm only there's only one order for cress this week, uh, one punnet. So we'll just do one, and that one's done. And I'll just show you sort of how it should look. Okay, what's next? And kale, red Russian kale. Beautiful, I love this um, look of the microgreen. It gets the beautiful purple stem on it. And same again, it's a slightly larger seed. Uh, it's about four and a half grams for this punnet. And um, works out perfect. There you go. All right, next. It's four done, three to go. Is red cabbage, oh, another favourite of mine. Just the pu deep purple in the stem and the and the variation in the leaf is just such a sought after microgreen for me. Um, and the nutritional benefits of red cabbage are phenomenal. The vitamin C and whatnot. Anyway, I won't go into that. There's your density of the planting again, about four and a half grams. All right. Uh, for the last two punnets for this order is radishes. Now what I do is use uh, China Rose Radish at the moment. It has a lovely pink stem with a green leaf. Now I'm spreading about three grams of it into the punnet and next I mix in is um, red Rambo Radish. Um, now I put about uh, three grams of this one. It's a larger seed, it weighs a bit more, but it all works out about the same in density, so about six grams all up. There you go, I'll just spread them evenly, mix them in the punnet, and... Um... Okie dokie. The next step, uh, getting them ready to go into germination and hibernation uh, mode. So I'm moving them into a clean, dry tray, and... Um, I'm about to cover them with some grade one quite fine vermiculite. It's uh, the finest I can get in my area and I love it. I uh, give the larger seeds a fair bit on top, I'd say about two to three mil, whereas the smaller seeds, probably a one mil, very light covering and that seems to work amazingly for me because I don't stack. So there's the radishes, that's got a fair amount of cover on it. And um, then I just mist them down. I don't find any need at the moment for the antifungal um, Brent's organic recipe. I'm just using water there. Um, I've got my ventilation and temperatures right in the grow room at the moment, so that's all okay. Um, and I just mist down the vermiculite, make it nice and moist. And pretty much that's all the water they're going to see for up to four days now, folks. Maybe five, just depending how germination's going. And then I just close the lid, that acts as a humidity dome. You can write on the top there what it is if you're not sure or you've forgotten because you can't see it. The vermiculite's covered them up. And um, yeah, I can stack five punnets into one of these trays I have and um, that's quite handy. And I just put a lid on top, give it a bit of a wet, uh, start the humidity going. And that one's done. Now, as for the red amaranth, um, same story. I'm just putting them in a 1020 tray, the two punnets of red amaranth. That tray is still a bit moist, so the lid goes on. And that's it. Ready to go upstairs. Okay, here's where I'm stacking for now. At the top of my racks, they're getting the warmth from the lights and the roof above them. Now, the roof's only thin, thinly insulated, and it's um, helping keep the warmth there at around 26 degrees, but we'll see that coming up. Okay, it's the next morning, so day two. Um, I'm not going to put this in double time because I want to explain something briefly how I manage this. There's a look at the temperature, uh, Celsius on the left, Fahrenheit on the right. Um, now, that's about as max as I want it, but behind me is a, a split system air conditioner. So once I get above 26 degrees, I flick it on and bring that air temperature down. But as you can see, there's the red amaranth. The humidity is starting to build up in the, in the punnet there, and um, the free water is keeping that um, seed and soil nice and moist so I get nice even germination it's broken all through the vermiculite which has acted as a weight uh, for me and here's the other five that we did um, now the, that's the red Russian kale uh, it's coming along okay and um, as you can see more free water there in the punnet there's the red cabbage 
I'm pretty sure, yep. And there's some mixed radishes. They're all germinating. Bear in mind it's day two, folks, so that high temp is helping me out a lot. It's getting it germinated, but there's the crest before I go on. You've really got to keep that ventilation up. There's little cracks in the um, humidity in the two trays there put together that is allowing air to go in, but there is a fan behind me also that's directly blowing on them. It'll move the humidity away quick. Okay, 7.30 a.m. day three. Uh, here's some trays I've uncovered and um, we're going to have a check of the microgreens. Uh, first of all, the temperature, it's about 22 degrees Celsius. Um, these are looking good. I'm um, quite happy with that for day three. I know they'll be coming out tomorrow just from past experience. They'll be lovely and high, but we'll get to see that. Um, I know I repeat myself, but guys, just keep, keep a fan blowing at the trays it sounds odd but or around the room because there are cracks in the trays and that the air will get in there and just help move away that humidity that's building up in there just to prevent the fungus and mold good morning again I'm gonna speed things up a bit uh, it's about 22 degrees Celsius it's day four and yes that red amaranth looks like it's ready to go under lights and uh, we'll just check the others. Um, the cress, yep, that's a goer. It's going under lights today. The cabbage, yes. The radishes, most definitely. Geez, they grew a lot. Okay, I've done a similar video like this, uh, showing you how I um, uncover pots and punnets. But this is how I'm uncovering this order. I'm going to take out the red amaranth. It's day four. They're ready to go under the lights. And... Um, spread their leaves and photosynthesize a bit so I just give them a quick bottom water uh, let them drain off under there and I'm just going to see what's ready to go I've decided to leave the red cabbage and the kale under for another day so that'll mean five days in germination and and uh, in the dark basically but the radishes there the cress all perfect ready to go and um, there we go just give them a drink from underneath now I'm just putting back the two that I didn't want to uh, put under the lights yet. I just want a bit more volume out of them. Um, it really uh, helps you, you look amazing microgreens if you um, do as much as you can in the dark. That's Peppy's way, so I hope you understand. And I'm just draining them off. And um, there you go, the amaranth under the light. I pick one part of the shelving for that order, so I know that's for La Baraka. And um, that's that. All right, good morning. It's day five. It's about 25 degrees Celsius, about 7.30 in the morning. And we're just checking on the two that I left behind for an extra night. Um, the red Russian kale and the cabbage. They're looking okay. A bit of uneven germination with the kale, but that's fine. That'll come good. Checking on the radishes. Day five, looking fantastic. The cress, woohoo, beautiful. Red amaranth's looking great. Everything's looking. Hello, day six. Uh, same time again. There's a temperature of about 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'll just take you down and show you the amaranth. Day six looking perfect. Um, to me, anyway. There's the uh, mixed radishes. I'm probably going to close those lids up on them and put them in the fridge today just to slow them down because they're growing extremely well. <laughs> and there's the red cabbage and the kale. Those uh, it's a little seed dilemma with the kale sorted itself out. It's Friday, the 23rd of March, and it's delivery day for these microgreens. Uh, there's the labels we spoke of just before. The red cabbage, the radishes, the amaranth. The purple mazuna? Yeah, uh, I got a call from the restaurant and uh, he wanted to swap a red amaranth for a new line. I got this purple mazuna. So, um, yeah, that's fine. I always have other things on hand, so I could do that for him. But there we go. Seven punnets ready to be dropped off uh, by, by about 11 o'clock so he can use it for lunchtime service and over the weekend. There you go, guys. All done with an invoice too. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, we've come to the end of the video, you made it. Thanks for watching. I'm going to make this real quick because YouTube won't let me upload over 15 minutes on the phone. So I'm just going to say get healthy, get tasty. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you.